Hey everybody, final thoughts, time for Spectacular. And folks, uh, as soon as I heard that Ida Svensson and I think his brother Osman Svensson were getting together again to make another new title from Chili Fox Games, uh, I immediately wanted to get my hands on it because I am still to this day the hugest fan in the world of Come Together, which sadly has not gotten anywhere near as much love and respect as it should. It was in my top 10 a couple of years ago for the year. And let me tell you right now, folks, this is my early odds-on favorite for favorite game of the year for 2024. This game is so good. Uh, it is so simple. It is so clean. It is so elegant. It is so fast and yet so incredibly crunchy. It's like this was designed in a lab for me and Jen. Uh, you know, the closest I can think of. I know some people are going to draw comparisons between it and um, like uh, Burgundy because, oh, there's... You know, hexagon tiles and there's dice, right? But it, it's, you know, superficially it looks like it on the surface, but it's nothing like Burgundy. Uh, and it's really nothing like the one that I can draw the closest comparison to, Calico. It's a very different game other than the fact that it is a drafting tile laying game. So on some level they're the same, but the reason I draw parallels between those two, and Calico is in my top 50 games of all time, and this is in my top 20, and the reason both of these rank so high for me and Jen is because the draft is so agonizingly tension-filled. You know what it is you need. You can see it right there. But there's something else you need even more. And so you take that hoping, 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 crossing all of your fingers, crossing everything, that the other thing you need will be there. Uh, but other players might take it. Um, and, uh, you know, you just got to roll with the punches and say, oh, well, everything relied on me getting that, but I didn't, so what am I going to do instead? And, you know, that constant, just palpable, you know, you know, heart-stopping, you know, what are you going to do, uh, is there in spades in Calico, and it's here as well. But why does this raise so much above Calico? Because you have so much more control. Calico is a very tactical game. You can come up with the greatest plans in the world, but you're only drafting, if I recall correctly, from four tiles out there. It is... Not at all. If you're playing a two-player game, there's a decent chance what you need will still stick around, but generally not. Here, this brings into that incredibly tense, tight um, calico tile laying, and um, you know all these different things that you're trying to score that score huge points, but that often work at odds against each other. Plus, all the different typical ways you score. Uh, you know, all these different things you're trying to do with every single tile. You're trying to fulfill, you know, anywhere from a half a dozen to a dozen, you know, or upwards of a half a dozen different things each tile can potentially contribute to or ruin your plans of all these different ways you can score points. That was the Calico feel. You get that here as well. But unlike Calico, where you're just like, okay, it comes around to my turn. I guess I'll take that because what I really needed was long gone. In this game, here's what I've got in front of me. I've got all of these options. And I can look to the player to my right and see, oh, this is what they've got. And minus one thing that comes off here, folks, uh, you know, because it, it's, this basically does, you know, the typical drafting, um, was it no, typically called closed hand drafting of Seven Wonders or Sushi Go. There's so many games that do closed hand drafting. Um, you know, we've seen it a lot. But this game, it's open. But it still has that, uh, you know, pick and pass thing that closed hand drafting normally does. I can see that, right, if I take this yellow tile now, I have no use for that yellow tile unless I can get, uh, you know, a, a yellow five. I mean, it's pointless for me to take that unless maybe a four. I mean, if I can't get a four or five, it's worthless for me to take that. But I look over to my neighbor to the right, and what do they got? They got a yellow five right there, along with like six other things. And I know they're only going to take one of those things. So there's a one in six chance I'm going to get that yellow coming my way. And so you can make, this is a much more strategic game. You know, if you're playing with a lot of players, you can see all around the table, hey, in three turns, um, there's a 50-50 chance that tile is going to come my way. And that's the tile I need to finish this um, tower, which will double all the points of the tiles, or, or you know, which will score points all the dice all around it. I got a 50-50 chance of making that, so maybe I should go on ahead and start building for that tower now, and if it comes all the way around to me, I mean, and this is even true at a higher player count game. You know, drafting, which I normally play with my wife, Jen, where you have so much control because there's only one other player. Hey, I hand five over to you. I know I'm getting four of those back, and it just goes back and forth, you know, going back to, um, uh, you know, what was the first drafting game I ever played? You know, closed-hand drafting. Um, 
Stefan Feld's Notre Dame. Uh, you know, and it's it's I mean, as a two player game, these are always so satisfying because unlike a high player count game where okay, goodbye hand, I'll never see you again, and this other hand that's coming back to me, I'll get one of those things and then it moves on. But in all those games, all you can really think about is just what's going on in the immediate future. And you can't even do that very well because you don't know what's coming. It's just, oh, I know a hand of cards is coming my way. I guess when it gets here, I'll find out and I'll play very tactically and I'll pivot when I need to. Or maybe I'll get incredibly lucky and get that last science card I need. In this game, as stuff drafts around the table, everybody can see it. And that is such a huge game changer. Uh, this is not the first game to do it, uh, but it is definitely the best game at it. Especially because you're drafting two different things. Am I either going to take the tiles? Because this is a dual layer drafter. Tile layer. You lay the tiles down and then you put the dice on top. And there are restrictions. You need certain types of tiles to place certain types of dice and all of that. So I can see that tile coming. But that tile doesn't do me any good if I don't have the die. And the die is coming sooner! Oh, crap! Do I... So I get that die. I can't use it because I can't like store them off to the side. I have to use it. So do I skip that die? When that tile comes up, if I get it, do I then wait for the die, the die to come back around again? Maybe. What are the chances of that? Well, I can count how many players there are around the table. And I can, I can, yo, know, okay, yeah, there's a one in three chance. I should maybe go for that. And that level of long-term strategic thinking. Well, one thing I should warn you, it has the potential to make this game drag. Um, even playing with just one other player, with just my wife, we found, I mean, when we start getting, uh, this is my one complaint about the game. If everybody plays simultaneously, just head down, focusing on what's in front of me, what I can do right now, not thinking about the future, just what's in the present, as if I were playing Seven Wonders, you know, a closed hand, and you know, whatever comes to me comes to me, and that, uh, yeah, great, whatever. Um, the game is going to be done super fast, easily under a half an hour. Just zip die really, really fast, no matter the player count, because almost everything is done simultaneously. And you'll have a great time doing that. But I guarantee you, folks, as you play this more, you'll spend more time thinking about what's 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 to the right, and and what's what's next, and oh my gosh, what do they have? Oh boy. Um, I'll do this now because if I can get that. And this is where the one problem I have with the game is. I think they made one mistake with the development. They basically say, you know what? All these tiles, uh, they have a number on them. So if the player with number three wants to see what the player with number four is going to do before they make their choice, they, are, they can just say, hey, I want to wait. I'm not going to make my choice until you make your choice. And... That can ultimately force this game to take anywhere from two times as long to five times as long, depending, because pretty soon all players are going to say, okay, player one, you've got to make your choices, and, and, and it's a really tough, crunchy choice with a lot of things to balance, and then player two, finally, okay, now I'll make my choice. And, uh, you know, Jen and I have found, we've played it a few times now since we've gotten it, it's kind of hard. I should say, I am extrapolating what would happen to higher player count. I'm just talking about what happens with two players who are really competitive and are always paying attention to what's a potentially available for us down the road. And we were constantly saying, okay, well now you got to wait, I, mean, I got to wait for you, so I'll make my choice, you got to wait for me. And we ended up playing it turn-based and it takes almost twice as long as if we were all playing simultaneously when we first started playing. And here's the problem. Um, if... We could both be simultaneously looking and making our choices. The problem is, if I look over to you and you've already made your choice, and I see you brought that tile over and I know, oh, it's already gone, then I don't have to worry about this anymore. Oh, it's not gone. Well, now I can make my chance. And that gives me a huge advantage over you because I got to make a choice knowing what you were giving me. And by the same token, the player to the right of me, oh, they don't get that advantage um, because I can say, oh, I'm not going to go until you go, right? Because of the way the, the tiles are laid out. So um, it, it could have the potential to take much longer than it should if you have really min maxi type players. There is an easy solution for this. I should have grabbed one before I started filming. Hold on. Okay. 12-sided die. That's all it takes. If this game had come with 12-sided dice for everybody... This would be a flawless game. Maybe game of the year. Uh, this is a little house rule variant in case you ever pick up Spectacular. This is why I recommend. For however many players you have, you need that many, um, uh, what do you call it? 12-side dice. Just look at this. This is space 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Right? So, um, you know, when this is sitting in front of me, and, you know, there's like several dice here, and there's a few tiles. 
and you know my name and I'm figuring out what am I going to take and I decide you know what I'm going to take I'm going to take that right there that's number three I just take this and I put it down and cover it up and I'm done and this is a way to tell everybody, hey, I've made my decision. Of course, I the the you know the one that comes from my own public display. Hey, I just go on ahead and put that in play because I'm, players aren't really going to be ba uh, you know strategizing based on what you have out of your fixed thing. But just pick your number, wait till everybody's done, everybody's got their hand up. This is just a nice way to speed up gameplay because you know sometimes you have that thing where wait, it, why why isn't somebody revealing? Ah, why didn't you tell us you were done? Everybody can just see everybody's hiding their d6, reveal, and there it is. Number three, I take that, and what that means is. Until I do this, you, as my neighbor, could be looking over at this. And you know there's one, two, three, four, five, six different things I could take. I've already decided what I'm going to take, but I haven't told you what I'm going to take yet. And so, you can go on ahead and make your plan saying, well, okay, there's a, I really want that, um, I really want that, uh, you know, that, uh, what is this? This is the, uh, I really want this sloth. I need that sloth tile. That's going to finish my tower. Um, and I don't know if he's going to take it. But if, if I'm, I'm going to assume there's a, I've got a five and six chance. I mean, I don't think he needs it. He doesn't really have a lot of green. He's probably not going to go for it. I'm going to go. I'm going to assume that that's coming my way, and I'm going to place this other one now. And then when everybody reveals, and I reveal, ah, oh, number three, and I took that, and then you can breathe a sigh of relief. That's the way the game can be fully 100%. No matter how min maxi or competitive um, your 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 players are, and it will just go. And this then becomes the heaviest, fastest game I have ever played in all of board gamedom, quite frankly. And I mean, that's saying something. I mean, over the last few years, we've been seeing more and more of these games that are quick, under an hour affairs that don't, um, you know, I mean, for a long time, oh, if it's a fast game, that means it has to be a light game too, right? I don't want that. I want a super crunchy brain melting game with a lot of different things I have to figure out, but really simple, elegant rules that I can get done in under an hour. This comes along, one of the heaviest, I mean, uh, you know, most crunchy tile layers I've ever played, very clean, very fast, very simple, and with simultaneous play, really zips along, can be done under half an hour. And all it takes is just a way for me to keep secret what my plan is, and then we all reveal at the same time. And boom, problem solved. Now the game doesn't come with, was, I think this is a one to six player game, so it does not come with six uh, D12, so you'll have to resolve that yourself. Or I guess people could just write it down on a post-it note. Everybody can have a post-it note and write down in secret and then reveal, I guess. Um, now, none of this matters if you're playing at a lighter level. You know, just like, oh, I'm just trying to figure out the puzzle in front of me, and oh, whatever I get is whatever I get. But the fact that this is open pick and pass drafting, um, which I don't even know if there's a term for that. I'm sure other games have done this. Uh, I, I'm sure I've played some, but I, you know, I'm, I am in love with this now. This is going to make closed hand pick and pass drafting very, very difficult to go back to because I love this. And that is a simple way to make sure it zips along really fast. Uh, now, if you don't have D12s, uh, don't worry. I still highly recommend this as one of the best games of the year. But, um, you know, yeah. Uh, is it my game of the year? It's too early to say, folks. We're only here in the uh, in late July. So, uh, you know, this is going to be released at Essen. It's got a very, very small, minor. You know, if, you, if you're going to Gen Con uh, in a week from today, I believe, if I recall correctly. No, a week from yesterday? I think uh, if you're if you're going to Gen Con in 2024, de there will not be very many copies of this. You might want to swing by the Chili Fox booth wherever they are and beat feet because this will be gone fast, 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 and it should be. Then it'll get its bigger release at Essen, and then eventually it'll probably won't show up into stores until next year. I mean, heck, to this day, Come Together is still very. It's very, very hard to get your hands on. This might be something that's very, very hard to get your hands on too. I am still raving about Come Together. And now, for the next few years, I'm going to be raving a lot about Spectacular. And that, folks, um, was the run-through. Thanks so much for watching. Have a very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Oh, bye-bye.